Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I'm so pissed off right now. I went to get some lunch and I ordered a double triple bossy deluxe on a wrap, 4x4 animal style, extra shingles with a shimmy and a squeeze, light axle grease make it cry, burn it and let it swim, and what do they give me? These. They didn't even include pickles with these. Wait, is that good or bad? You forgot the pickles! Bubble Bass is one of the most popular characters in the Spongebob franchise. He's a fat, lazy, arrogant, rude nerd who likes action figures and eating fat, greasy food to his liking. He makes overcomplicated orders, and when they're done incorrectly, he's furious. He's voiced by D. Bradley Baker, who often voices various background characters in the show, as well as some minor characters like Squilliam Fancy Son. Bubble Bass is a stereotypical neckbeard character. Well, I shaved the beard off my neck before I got lunch today, and my neck doesn't even grow hair after I got sunburned last week. For those who don't know, a neckbeard man is a man who is unkempt and very hairy, which suits Bubble Bass since he's got body hair all over him, and is big since his clothes barely don't fit him. He wears glasses and is a grown-ass man, but he lives with his mom in the basement of her house, and he has many problems with his mom interfering with his nerdy actions. He has a rivalry with Spongebob where he tries to trick Spongebob and make him inferior, or just for his own personal gain, and always gets his just dues in the end. Bubble Bass is an olive green color and speaks with a slight speech impediment and breathes heavily sometimes. The best there is? I don't think so. Bubble Bass has had an interesting history throughout the series, and today, I wanted to go over that history and dissect his character as a whole. I'll be going over his general character traits, some of the more predominant characters he interacts with, and talking about all his major appearances throughout the series, whether it's a major, supporting, minor role, or just a cameo appearance. He has had a total of 38 appearances in the Spongebob series, including a cameo in the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water. And that's too many to talk about, so I'll be going over his more major slash noteworthy appearances in the series. And of course, I'm only talking about his appearances in the main show. He has appeared in the spin-offs, Camp Coral and the Patrick Star Show, but I still haven't watched them and I still refuse to. I mean, seriously, just seriously, what the fuck is this? So now, let's get started. As previously stated, Bubble Bass is unkempt and we can see body hair all over him. He wears clothes that are barely too small for him. He frequents the Krusty Krab and orders all sorts of food that will no doubt make people fatter as well as orders an abundance of it. He's also very clearly a nerd as he has many comic books and action figures and is shown to be upset if they get damaged or missing. As shown in episode 505, Bubble Bass's tab from season 12, he's a big fan of the board game called The Three Deadly Challenges as he made a real life recreation of that board game. He's also a fan of Murray Man and Barnacle Boy as he is shown to earn a lot of merchandise from it. He's very rude and deceptive as he has tricked Spongebob on numerous occasions, like in episode 438, Moving Bubble Bass, when he tricks Spongebob and Patrick to help him move out of his mom's house by bribing them with a free lunch and makes them do all the heavy lifting themselves. And of course, there's his famous trick from episode 13, Pickles, from season 1, where he tricks Spongebob into thinking he didn't put pickles on his Krabby Patty, which makes Spongebob lose his confidence. He's also lazy, as shown in Moving Bubble Bass, when when he doesn't want to do the chores his mom makes him do. He's also very cowardly as shown in Pickles when he runs away from the Krusty Krab after he was found out that he was hiding the pickles under his tongue the whole time to avoid getting whatever he was going to get. Speaking of Spongebob, let's move on to Bubble Bass's relationships with the other characters. Of course, we'll start off with Spongebob. As we all know, Spongebob and Bubble Bass appear to be enemies, as shown by the several times he tries to con Spongebob, and when Spongebob also calls Bubble Bass out on the tricks he has played on him. In Pickles, it's implied that they shared some kind of rivalry in the past. Bubble Bass. Yara! Square Pants. And of course, this is reinforced throughout the episode when Bubble Bass laughs at Spongebob during that trick. There's also moving Bubble Bass when he tricks Spongebob and Patrick into helping him move out of his mom's basement. In episode 427, Squid Noir from season 11, when Spongebob was helping Squidward look for his clarinet, Spongebob questioned Bubble Bass, but he did that by having a fight with action figures with Bubble Bass. But interestingly, as the show went on, they seemed to become allies of some sort. 
In episode 419, Larry the floor manager from season 11, Spongebob defends Bubble Bass when Mr. Krabs shoves a Krabby Patty in Bubble Bass's mouth. And later in the episode, they work together to turn the Krusty Krab back to normal. In episode 486, Spongebob's big birthday blowout from season 12, Bubble Bass is one of the characters who helped plan Spongebob's surprise birthday party and was also there to sing the birthday song for Spongebob at the end. This of course doesn't last very long because in episode 521, the big bad Bubble Bass from season 13, Bubble Bass goes to extreme lengths to get a Pigulon action figure that Spongebob and Patrick had, even going as far as to destroy Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward's houses. It's definitely interesting considering that Spongebob almost seems to be a little nicer to Bubble Bass in later episodes, regardless as to what Bubble Bass thinks of him. Continuity, right? Spongebob and Bubble Bass seem to have a love-hate relationship, but it mostly feels like Bubble Bass tolerates Spongebob more than anything. As for Patrick, their relationship seems to be more consistent in my opinion. The first time they interact was moving Bubble Bass, where he bribes them with a free lunch to help him with moving out of his mom's house. When he ate the free lunches by the end, Patrick was absolutely furious, way more so than Spongebob, outright threatening Bubble Bass. In episode 472, Swamp Mates from season 12, Bubble Bass's mom arranges a play date with Patrick. Bubble Bass is not pleased when Patrick touches his action figures and when Patrick dumps swamp water in the basement. They end up in a real swamp together and Patrick tries to help Bubble Bass look for his action figure and they do bond a little bit while looking for it. But after they fall off a waterfall, it was revealed to have all just been a dream. But he does get his action figure back that he was looking for. As previously stated, in the Big Bad Bubble Bass, he does whatever it takes to get the Piggylon action figure from Spongebob and Patrick out of extreme anger and lust. He has a very interesting relationship with his mom. He's fed up with his mom making him do chores, so he decides to move away out of spite. His mom also seems to treat him like a little kid, as she's arranged a play date with Patrick and makes Bubble Bass do his chores. He doesn't seem to interact with Squidward or Mr. Krabs a lot, but whenever he does, he very clearly doesn't get along with them or think very highly of them. He clearly hates Squidward as seen when he throws him in pickles and gets into a fight with him in episode 383, Bulletin Board from season 9. He also scans Mr. Krabs a lot when he refuses to pay his tab in Bubble Bass's tab, as well as when he claims Patrick is damaged when he thinks Patrick's a standee in episode 439, High Sea Diving from season 11. With all this in mind, not only is Bubble Bass fat and arrogant, he's kind of a jerk at times. Now let's move on to his notable appearance. His first appearance in general is Pickles, where he tricks Spongebob into thinking he never put pickles on a Krabby Patty, making Spongebob lose his confidence. He gets found out at the end when he was hiding the pickles under his tongue the whole time. He then runs away to escape getting hurt. Later in that season, in episode 21, F.U.N., he accidentally sits on Plankton and only gets up when Spongebob throws him popcorn. In episode 38, Fools in April, Spongebob crashed through Bubble Bass's butt as a part of Squidward's prank. However, I don't know about anybody else, but I didn't think this was Bubble Bass as a kid, because here, he's purple with a white shirt and blue pants, whereas he's normally olive green with an orange shirt and brown pants. Just putting up this comparison, can you really blame me for thinking it was different? Yeah, I figured you would blame me. After this, he was absent from the series for years. He finally returned in episode 312, Plankton's Good Eye from season 8. In this episode, his house was on fire, but Plankton offered to catch him, and Bubble Bass fell on top of him. He was later seen again at the end of the episode at the Chum Bucket when Spongebob and other Bikini Bottomites give Plankton a surprise. After that, his next major appearance was in season 9 with Bulletin Board. When Spongebob puts up a community bulletin board, some negative comments were posted on it. He mocks Spongebob as well as the Krusty Krab as a whole, claiming that the board was never wrong. He later gets a rude comment about himself and gets into a fight with Squidward. He made a couple appearances in Season 10, but they were just non-speaking cameos, so I'm not counting them. His next notable appearance was Larry the Floor Manager from Season 11. At the beginning, he makes another overcomplicated order and was interrupted by Mr. Krabs shoving a Krabby Patty in his mouth. And then later, he helps to put the Krusty Krab back to normal. His next supporting appearance was Squid Noir from Season 11. When Squidward played his clarinet badly, he told Squidward to get the hell away from him. When the clarinet was stolen, Squidward confronts him and he and Spongebob get into a fight, resulting in the Suburban Dad action figure getting broken. 
As previously mentioned, there's also moving bubble baths where he's fed up with his mom making him do his chores and decided to move out. He tricks Spongebob and Patrick into helping him move with a free lunch only to have purposely eaten them before they finish helping him. He then gets his comeuppance when his mom packs him in a box and drags him around town bumping him into things. There's also swamp mates where he and Patrick end up in a swamp when Patrick comes over. And while they were looking for Bubble Bass's Wonder Whale action figure, they end up forming a reluctant friendship. In Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout, he's one of the people who have decorated for Spongebob's surprise party and he joins everybody else in singing a birthday song for Spongebob at the very end. In Bubble Bass's tab, he refuses to pay his tab, so Mr. Krabs sends Spongebob and Squidward to collect the tab. Bubble Bass challenges them to a game of the three deadly challenges. When they win, Bubble Bass can't pay his tab, so Mr. Krabs makes him work at the Krusty Krab until his tab is paid off. He annoys the customer so much, so they donate some money so that way they can pay off Bubble Bass's tab, so he is no longer working at the Krusty Krab. And of course, Bubble Bass opens a new tab. In the Big Bad Bubble Bass, Bubble Bass goes out of his way to get the action figure he wanted from Spongebob and Patrick, even destroying Spongebob, Patrick's, and Squidward's houses in the process. In episode 522, Seaman Sponge Haters Club from season 13, Bubble Bass tells a story of how Spongebob refused to let Bubble Bass eat anything because Spongebob deemed the meal as less than perfect. Yeah, video games aren't perfect either, but I still buy and play them. And that is roughly every notable appearance of Bubble Bass that I wanted to talk about. I know there were some that I missed, but like I said, I just didn't want to go through all of them. Going through all that, he is indeed a good character. But it is very weird how he made a couple appearances in Season 1, didn't appear again until Season 8, and then got multiple spotlight episodes in seasons after the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water. He is definitely a consistent character, which is great to see in a long-running series like this. But sometimes it feels like older characters like him are brought back so much these days as a way to pander to the long-time fans to make sure they're still watching. I think it's cool seeing Bubble Bass appear from time to time, but I don't want him to be overused. While there were some great episodes from the later seasons with him, I feel like nothing will ever top his best moments from season 1. However, I will admit that he was used fairly well in the modern seasons. At the very least, he wasn't brought back and appeared every two episodes or so just in the background. They actually did make episodes where he was the lead and delved more into untapped potential that season 1 never did. They truly got a lot out of him, which is a good thing compared to only throwing him in the background and doing absolutely nothing with him at all. But regardless, he's a fan favorite character that definitely has his place in the Spongebob series. Also, Bubble Bass, as his name implies, is indeed a bass. Bubble Bass is an awesome character who has had some great moments throughout the series. His voice is hilarious, and it's still really cool when he appears in episodes these days. But with how often he's been shoehorned into episodes from the modern seasons, some people will start to wonder why. I personally don't have a problem with him appearing, but overuse of a good thing will make that good thing become stale if it's not done right, and I think it was done well for the most part. If any of you Bubble Bass fanboys out there are pissed off at me for saying that, then just remember his original appearance and forget everything else that I was talking about. And all I can say now is that, since I don't eat pickles, I'm glad I'm nothing like Bubble Bass. Oh.